Hey Men and Warriors, welcome back to my channel. This is Kate where I share a weekly video with you about something related to either perimenopause or menopause. Today I am talking about hot flushes, hot flashes and what they are and also how you can help to manage them if it's something that you struggle with particularly. Hot flushes were something, one of my worst ever symptoms. I led up to the menopause having lots of really heavy duty night sweats, which I just figured were just night sweats. And it turns out they were perimenopause. Um, I was quite young when I went through the perimenopause. Uh, I think I was through with the entire thing post-menopause by 41. Um, my nurse and doctor both didn't think I was in perimenopause. Um, and so it's been a journey of discovery. But because hot flushes were something that I used to really, really struggle with, I wanted to just explain why we get them and also ways that you can help reduce them significantly. Um, I still get hot flushes occasionally and that is when I'm not looking after myself very well and I've learned how I can actually get rid of them 100%. So that's what I'm gonna share with you today. Firstly, just to understand the relationship between estrogen and why you might be getting hot flushes. So as we go through the menopause, all our sex hormones fall, but estrogen helps us regulate our body temperature. In the brain, we have a region called the hypothalamus and that helps to regulate our body's temperature. The messaging gets a little bit confused as our estrogen levels fall. And so essentially what might not be triggered as a hot flush in normal days, when your hormones are erratic, it can lead to that miscommunication. So the body thinks it's overheating and makes you sweat profusely. That is it in simplistic terms. You find also that some people get hot flushes and then get the chills afterwards. Sometimes I get the chills, but rarely. Normally it's just a hot flush. So there is that center of the brain, the hypothalamus that is related to the falling estrogen that is actually triggering your vasomotor reaction to the falling estrogen. There are also neurotransmitters involved, serotonin and norepinephrine, and they also regulate the body's temperature. As our hormones are fluctuating, again, the signals can get misinterpreted and those can also have a negative impact on how you manage the, the sort of the heat dissipation within your body, which can also lead to more hot flushes. But it's also important to know that while you have these falling fluctuating hormones, that is so much that you can do to really modify your response. A lot of those are what you eat, what you don't eat, what you drink, what you don't drink, lifestyle factors. And so that holistic approach is really important for you to understand. And I will be sharing more about this during this video today. I mean, for instance, in the workplace, if you are working and you're menopausal, you're struggling with hot flushes, it can be really embarrassing. I remember the one that really stands out for me. I was talking to a professor in a big university building and it was before I'd sort of really got to grips with the fact I was perimenopausal. And I remember having this volcanic explosion and literally within seconds, I could feel myself going red. Then I became really uncomfortable. I could see he was thinking, what the heck's going on with her? Then literally, I just burst into sweating. I'm not normally a sweaty person. And I could feel it dripping down my back. I could feel it running down my temples. It was just horrendous. And, you know, if you're in the workplace, particularly if you're surrounded by a lot of men, it can indeed be really difficult for you. So there are several things you can do. I'm not going to talk into the, about the workplace in any great detail today. But, you know, if you have an HR department, go and have a chat with them. See if there is any menopause initiative that's already been started. If there's not, consider suggesting that one gets started. You could even be the catalyst for that. You know, um, flexible wear attire, flexible attire, what you wear at work. You know, I remember when I was suffering really badly with hot flushes, I stopped wearing heavy duty sweatshirts like this because I couldn't get them off fast enough. I needed thin layers and loads of layers so that I could just strip off really fast. Cardigans became my new best friend. Well, if you're in the workplace and have to wear a certain type of uniform, that could be difficult for you. So, you know, make your make your needs known to your HR department. It might be that you could start like a club or a society for menopausal women in your workplace, just so that you've got some community together. And then a sort of a, one singular voice is easy to ignore. Many voices, it's not easy to ignore. So if you feel like you need a bit of a push to, to help 
them hear you and what you're saying, it could be well worth just first of all starting your own little menopause society club and and then take it from there. You know, smokers in the workplace, they're allowed to go out and they're allowed to have their cigarettes outside and lots and lots of breaks. <laughs> it just beggars believe how many breaks smokers are allowed during a working day. But as a menopausal woman, woman, perhaps you could request that a room is left a small, it doesn't need to be a massive room, it doesn't need to be super luxurious, but a room that is cool enough that you have quick access to, as well as the other women in your workplace that need quick access, just to literally go into a room that's super cool, it's got plenty of water on tap for you, just so that you can sort of regain yourself before you go back into it. Also, if you're in a really stressful workplace environment, you, know, you may have had a heavy duty meeting, you may, something might have come up for you. If you've got a room that you can go to that is cooler, that has lots of water, that maybe even has some gentle music playing, just for you to go and just find your inner anchor again, just for a few minutes to then reset and go back into the workplace Things like that can really help you. Ask if you're allowed to have a desk fan or sit near a window that you can keep open. I think it's important to understand that, you know, while you might be blazing hot, the rest of the workforce might be feeling cold. So I, I don't think we have a carte blanche about, you know, letting all the Arctic air in. But if you're allowed to sit nearer a window, window seats generally are cooler than, than the middle of the room seats. So maybe request that as well and see if that's something that you could chat to your HR department about or whoever initiates these kind of practices within your workplace and if nobody does yet make sure that you're the catalyst to start suggesting those sorts of things so the role of nutrition and hydration in menopause but specifically hot flushes nutrition things like spices um coffee uh la, 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 sweet stuff sugary stuff refined sugars you know like sweet chocolate bars etc those things are likely to trigger hot flushes. And I'll drop the link to a tracker below. In fact, I'll drop, drop the link to a couple of trackers below. It's just a quick form, fill it out, I'll send you both the trackers. It will give you a really good opportunity to track what you're eating, track how you're feeling, track how you're sleeping, track your mental health, your, your digestive system, et cetera, et cetera, just so that you know that what you're doing is working best for you we're all individual and what might trigger a hot flush in the majority of us may not trigger a hot flush in you you might be able to eat spicy food and not respond at all to it I know although I love spicy food and I admittedly cook with chili probably nearly every single day chili quite often will trigger a hot flush particularly if I'm tired or particularly if I'm stressed just go back to stress very very briefly because I cover it and I've covered it a lot in the past our adrenal glands, they do the backup job of the ovaries when the ovaries go into retirement. So when you have well-functioning adrenal glands, when you're not super stressed over a long period of time, you will manage your menopausal symptoms much more effectively. However, if you're under stress, you're probably going to have a much smaller limit to the things that you can tolerate before it sets off hot flushes so while sometimes you might be able to eat spicy food, there may be other occasions where you know you 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 have a curry for eat for, for dinner, and then you're literally awake throughout the night with really hot, sweaty periods. So just be mindful of that. Again, caffeine, when you have a coffee, often you'll find that you'll have a fl hot flush immediately afterwards or very soon afterwards. Same with sweet chocolate bars, cookies, refined sugars on the whole tend not to be very good. If you're starting to get thirsty or dehydrated, by the way, if you're thirsty, it's already a suggestion that you're becoming dehydrated. So always make sure you glug a big glass of water. By the way, apologies for the blown out look of this. The light has fallen so fast today and it's it's I'm juggling trying to make it look vis visually appealing-ish. So it's a bit kind of blown out. I, I, I clearly need to get better, better quality equipment. Um, but just be mindful that if you're thirsty, that, that will trigger a hot flush. And that, for me, that triggers quite a nauseating hot flush. I have types of different types of hot flushes, I've realized. And the thirsty one is a really unpleasant one. Make sure that you're eating plenty of phytoestrogen rich foods, things like soy based products, uh, tempeh. Um, uh, what's it called tofu you know that sort of thing um, antioxidants filled foods so eat a wide range of fruits and vegetables try and eat a lot of different colors 
Uh, we tend not to eat many of the dark reds and blues. So, you know, things like blueberries, raspberries, black currants, that sort of thing. Oh, it's making my mouth water. Make sure you're trying to, and aubergines, uh, cruciferous vegetables are incredibly good for you. Uh, those actually contain, when you eat a lot of cru cruciferous vegetables, it contains something called DIM, D-I-M. I'm not going to try and read the full word because I always get it wrong. But that is really good for you. So cru cruciferous vegetables help sort of mop up that estrogen dominant effect that we have as we're going through the menopause. That would be very beneficial in helping manage your hot flushes. Lots of, well, play, eat enough seeds and nuts as well. Things like flaxseed are incredibly good for you. They're also really potent source of protein i'll drop the healthy protein guide in the link below as well you're more than welcome to to have that i started that because i realized i was not eating enough protein through the menopause our needs go up and it literally classified food groups as the the highest protein content down to the lower ones and, and it's quite surprising in actual fact flaxseed um, is one of the ones right up there at the top so make sure you're eating milled flaxseed because it's quite hard for our I, well I don't think our bodies really digest the full flaxseed so have it milled keep it fresh because it goes rancid very fast and uh, I mean you'll be fine if you've got a bag and you work your way through it but it, it does tend to go rancid quite quickly if you don't you know if you sit leave it in your cupboard for several months on end. Lifestyle adjustments will also help you so if you do regular exercise I would recommend you go more low to zero impact. It's going to be beneficial for your joint pain too. And um, you are going to help reduce the stress response that you get from your workouts. You're probably going to enjoy them a whole lot more, but that is going to give you more of a sense of achievement when you do those sorts of workouts. When we are spiking our cortisol over a long period of time with a heavy duty workout or heavy duty cardio or fast jogging consistently, it's not good for us. And it's really not good for our menopause hormones. You will find you will burn fat and lose belly fat more quickly by going more low impact and work out, having workouts that still challenge you, but in a much more holistic way, bearing in mind that we need to be kind to ourselves through our menopause if you need any help with that again so many links I'm sharing today I'll drop a link beneath this uh, get your sparkle back fill that form in um, I will then be in touch with you and we'll help put you put together a plan that will meet you where you're at and help you reduce your menopause symptoms but also help you keep lean and strong mobile flexible stable etc mindfulness techniques can be really beneficial as well I think one of the best mindfulness techniques, one that I use that works really well for me, I'm a complete squirrel brain. I start my day with three things I'm grateful for and I end my day with three things I'm grateful for. It just helps me reconnect with the really important things because I mean, days they, they, days can take over, can't they? And you can go to bed so frazzled and it's just like, ah, everything's been reactive. And I find that by the time, you know, if you can just be grateful for three things in the morning, three things in the evening, it just gives you that sense of, groundedness you might find that meditation really works for you things like yoga walking in nature walking in nature is does it for me as well as exercises um, I am absolutely useless at meditation but it doesn't mean to say that won't suit you or somebody else so again we are all completely different what works for your sister your mother your best friend your neighbor may not work for you so don't feel a complete failure if you don't get into the meditation thing or you don't get into the exercise thing. There are plenty of other things that you can do. But just as a caveat, if you don't exercise, you will get your, your muscles will atrophy, which can lead to looking like cellulite. It makes you much weaker. Your bones will lose their density, which is, again, that risk for osteoporosis. Strength training really is one of those things that we all absolutely should do through the menopause if we want to be healthier, more energized, and just get to an older age fitter, really. Gut health is also incredibly important. Gut health is important for literally every aspect of our life, but as well as going through, you know, making sure you're not constipated, making sure that you haven't got leaky gut, that you're not struggling with IBS type symptoms. When our gut is healthy, and I found this out not long ago, oh God, I will drop another link to the four week gut healing system that I did. I, my menopause symptoms absolutely vanished. It didn't take any major effort. We ate loads. I lost weight. I slimmed down. 
um literally I, I felt like I was almost tied to the kitchen because we get to eat so much but it was a beautiful experience it was only four weeks my symptoms went um I ate more than I ever normally do lost weight drank lots of water I still actually did have some wine which I technically you're not supposed to have but I figured it was red <laughs> let's get those berries and the resveratrol in um not every night but I just being completely honest I still drank wine because I think a lot of us think oh I would love to do a four-week gut healing system but I really like my glass of wine in the evening so I just want you to know that I did and you can <laughs> they'll say you shouldn't on the program of course but you can and it is I'm probably not supposed to say that but anyway I'm, I'm, I'm just this is real life I'm, I'm not going to pretend anything um it worked really really well for me my symptoms all of them completely went completely vanished and it was quite miraculous we balanced our macros so essentially depending on what your ideal calorie target is you get allocated various container groups and your I mean for me I was allowed six vegetable containers a day which I have to say as much as I love veggies I struggle to eat all six um you're allowed four protein containers a day again I struggle to eat all four four different types of carbohydrates I struggle to eat all four of those the one thing I nearly did every day well was two two containers of fruit I love my fruit that was an easy one I just grab an apple dead simple uh, then you've got your healthy fats your nuts your seeds that sort of thing and it was such a, a useful program to do because we often think the amount of people that I talk to say yeah I eat clean I eat healthy that's exactly what I said before I started all this you might well do you might prepare all your food at home but are you eating it in the right macronutrient proportion and it's not that complicated it's really really not that complicated in fact i created an entire trello board of recipes and i i structured all the days out so we've got like i think there's 10 or 11 entire days of breakfast snack lunch snack dinner and all sorts of various concoctions and some really lovely recipes that come with it as well and by doing that my symptoms went I honestly felt like a menopause imposter because it's just like I haven't had any symptoms at all and then when I finished it and I became a little bit lackadaisical with it bam came back again not too bad but then I so you you have a huge amount of control over your menopause symptoms let me just add that you do you also want to make sure when you've got a good gut that's functioning well when you have been to the toilet, you should not be coming out and it's leaving it really, really stinky. You're not having gold lame rat poos. Let's just be honest. They don't come out smelling of rosebuds, unfortunately. But there's a difference between a healthy poo and a stinky poo. And if they're stinky, that is an indication that something that you're eating or drinking or your gut health is not great. If you can leave the bathroom and it's not too much of a pong, you're probably doing something right. Also having regular bowel movements. Um, when your gut is good, you don't want to be having too much bloating or constipation because the longer that shit stays in your body, it's not good for you. You're, you're hanging on to a big pile of poo that is giving up. You, you imagine what that would be like in a bucket sat in your bathroom. It'd be pretty stinky and it would not be nice for the environment. Same thing happens in your colon. It's pretty stinky. It gets pretty gassy. It can get very hard if it stays there for too long. You want the stuff to pass through. That's one of the reasons why lots of vegetables are so good for you because they're very high in fiber, lots of water as well. And that does help to push it through. If you struggle with constipation, give it a try. Try it for a good week probably eat more fruit than you're doing right now eat loads of vegetables drink loads of water enough water you don't have to drown yourself in water but drink plenty of water throughout the course of the day I drink six pint glasses a day of water you're not going to do any harm by drinking six pints of, of water a day and just see if that eases your constipation if you struggle with constipation it definitely should do also a wide range of pre and probiotics so prebiotics feed the probiotics so the probiotics are what we know as the gut bacteria when you hear of people saying oh you want healthy bacteria in your gut those are the probiotics the prebiotics well if you eat lots of vegetables you're fine because prebiotics really is that fiber um different vegetables have different sort of values of prebiotic but if you're eating a wide range of vegetables and fruit you're absolutely fine 
Digestive enzymes can make a difference. I drink a superfood shake every single day that contains adaptogen herbs. They help me manage stress more effectively, but it also contains pre and probiotics and digestive enzymes. So I know that I'm really looking after my gut on top of the basic lifestyle things that I'm doing, like drinking plenty of water, like exercising, like eating loads and loads of vegetables. So I really want you to understand how much power you have at managing your hot flushes or your hot flashes more effectively. I challenge you, try tracking, download the trackers, use them to see if you can notice a pattern. I'm pretty sure you will do. If you struggle repeatedly with things, it might even be night sweats. Actually, night sweats and hot flushes are slightly different beasts, but they have they sort of come under the same umbrella. Um, track your food, track your drink, track your stress, track your bowel movements, and track your mental health. How are you feeling? Because some days you can wake up and you just think, well, yeah, that, I'm, I'm invincible today. Let's do it. And then other days, far too many, you wake up thinking, oh, God, what shall I do? I don't know. I've got a plan. Have I got a plan? I forgot. Did I have a plan? Did I actually think about it? Did I write a to-do list? Have I got a to-do list? Where did I put my to-do list? Did I start one? Do you know what I mean? So I, That happens to me, too. Some days I feel like I'm on fire. Some days I can start feeling like I'm on fire and then it declines very rapidly. Other days it's just like I feel like I'm pea soup all day long. And But when we're tracking, it helps. It's like we become a super sleuth. We have a magnifying glass on what's going on underneath the exterior. And most of that is how you're managing your stress, what you're eating, what you're drinking, how well you're sleeping. And you might just say, well, I don't sleep. My sleep is terrible because of the hot flushes, the anxiety, da di da di da I promise you everything that I have shared in today's video with you will also enhance your how you are managing your menopausal symptoms. It won't make your symptoms get worse, enhance. It will help you enjoy your menopause more effectively. So I'd be really interested to hear, have you have you tracked? Please comment below what, share your experience. Do, do you struggle with hot flushes or hot flushes? Have you found that something, by doing something particular, it makes them worse or that you can help alleviate your hot flushes or flashes? I'm saying flushes, flashes, because, you know, we're global. And in the UK, we say flushes and across the pond, they say flashes. So flush, flash, I don't mind. It's the like niche niche, don't mind. Potato, potato. Um, so thank you for your company today. Again, I apologize for the terrible lighting. Uh, I've, I've tried my hardest and it's still rubbish. So anyway, that's just the way it goes. Um, I hope you have a fabulous week and do download those myriad resources that I set up, suggested to you today. Um, just incidentally, while I'm thinking about it, you might struggle with procrastination and productivity and that fear that I mentioned just a few minutes ago. I will also drop the link to my productivity and fear busting guide because that will help you clarify your thoughts. But it also goes into quite a lot of detail. I, I'm, I'm also a psychotherapist and specialized in anxiety and fear holds us back from achieving a lot of things that we could do in life. I've just recently renovated a casement window. I was terrified to start it because I've never done one before and it was badly rotten. <laughs> It's just turned out so much better than I ever thought it would do. And if I hadn't tried and started, I would never have known. I'd have always wondered. And at the end of the day, if the worst happens, well, it's not the end of the world. So that productivity and fear busting guide will really, really help you bust through your limitations and help you take action on those things that you probably know you need to. But for some reason, you're holding off. Again, thank you so much for your company. It's been a blast and I look forward to chatting to you next week.